welcome to painting happy little minis. I uh, was <laughs> sorry, I, I was so not ready for that. <laughs> Keep going. Go I'm Gretchen. I'm Dave. And today we are painting some Malifaux minis. We are indeed. We're All painting right. them. We're be painting them from the uh, Anya core box here, and Anya is part of the Syndicate. She the is. Syndicate. I have her so I think the Syndicate right is here. a fairly new thing for third edition. <laughs> Say so just just here, Syndicate. Is that like a Damascus kind of uh, pattern on her? Yeah, that that is a. That is in fact a pattern. A pattern on her uh, coat? Yep, yeah. definitely. We'll have to see about painting that. I'm just challenging myself. You're getting challenged. You had the lovely Hawaiian shirt challenge last time, which I, I went on vacation and I saw this and I thought, you know. You know who would like this. Who just needs to be haunted <laughs> by the ghosts of Minnie's past. Yes. Dave. <laughs> Me. It was too perfect. It was it was too good. If they, like, I, if they had more, I would have just. If I had more money, I guess I should say I'd just buy sure. everyone Hawaiian shirt. You just Hawaiian <laughs> shirts all around. <laughs> it would have been, would have been crazy. Uh, and then but last no. episode, I had to paint Jeff Goldblum's likeness on a dinosaur. I did see that. Yeah. I saw a photo and then this awesome. episode, if I choose that one, I have to paint some kind of flowery vibe going on there. But you don't have to paint. Now, I feel oh, like no. I have to now. No? I don't know. You feel like you do? I feel like I should just keep keep the ball rolling mm -hmm. with with challenges. With the challenges? I think you yeah. should. I personally think it'll be great. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to paint this guy here, who is Winston Finnegan. Okay, but are you going to keep his mustache? Oh, yeah. He, he keeps his mustache, his five o'clock shadow, his, his sh sort of shaved side of the head, his <laughs> glass of wine. All of it. I'm gonna be drunk by the end. <laughs> Through osmosis. I wanna, I wanna see you get that. I mean, on a mini. These we were talking earlier before we started. Yep. Um, these are small compared to what we've been doing. They are. They are teeny are... tiny. Um, yeah. I'm, I am excited to see you paint a mustache on something this, this tiny. This tiny. Yep. I wanna see it. I'll get there. Oh look! Speaking of being haunted by. <laughs> By Hawaiian shirts. Oh, there. Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> I I am not going to paint a Hawaiian shirt. It on just pops Winston up every Finian. now and again. Yep. Yeah. Worry, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Phew. <laughs> I feel better just now. In your dreams, in your nightmares. Yep. Hawaiian it's shirt. It's all over the place. So there he is. He has his arms spread wide, welcoming. He has his glass of wine. I'm sure uh, he's going to do something. That's fairly vague, isn't it? <laughs> Josh says, what is the alcohol content of paint water? Uh, hmm. Not enough is the answer. Yumi <laughs> <laughs> says, so tiny. We should say hi to uh, Josh, Jason, Roger, JT, and Ayumi. Welcome, everybody. Cool. Oh, Josh says he, he loves to stick around, but he has to install the circuit breaker. Oh, that's that sounds, terrible. I, yeah. Hopefully it's just the one. I don't one. know how difficult that is or isn't. I've never, I've never done that. I think if you have all the pl pieces in place, like, like yeah, together, it's, it's fairly quick. So you should be able to make it back. But if he has to like pull all the wires to the, <laughs> to the breaker box, that's a different story. Yeah. That will take forever. Hey James, welcome. Welcome, welcome. We're going to be painting some Malifaux. Today. There we go, Malifaux third edition. The um, sorry. Whoop, there we go. The Anya core box. So it should be fun. We haven't painted Malifaux stuff for a while. I think last time it was uh, the Gremlins. It was the Bayou Gremlins. The Bayou. These are from. Hmm. I should turn my mic, my mic on. Oh, you should turn your mic on. I think Leona should turn her mic on. Yep. But yes, these are from Weird Weird Miniatures. From Weird Minis. Yep. And they are from third edition. They are, which is super cool. Uh, something I saw yesterday, day before, on the uh, on the mighty internet uh, was a um, something from Weird. Basically, they're advertising a new starter box that had two two um, 
factions in it, two different Malifaux factions. Oh, cool. So um, the cool thing about that was that, um, so we'd also have a game called The Other Side. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea with the with Malifaux is that there was a, um, like a portal opened up, a breach uh, through to another world. And of course the people of Earth decided to start going through to um, sort of mine it of its resources. Uh, Sounds accurate. Yep, because it's what we do uh, as people. Uh, and on the other side, they also found some some different creatures like the the Bayou Gremlins and so on. Uh, but basically, that Malifaux is played in like on the breach side. So the other, it's played on the breach side of things. So not on Earth. Uh, the other side game is played on Earth, Earth side, rather than Breach side. Uh, but when they first released it, the miniatures, um, even though the miniatures were designed by the same people, uh, you couldn't use your Malifaux miniatures in games of the other side, and you couldn't use your other side miniatures in games of Malifaux. So there's a bit of a disconnect. Which was unfortunate. Yeah. Even though it's even though there are two different two separate worlds separated by this breach, they're in the same universe. They one can't exist without the other, kind of thing. So um, the exciting news is that now you'll be able to use Malifaux miniatures in the other side and other side, presumably other side miniatures in Malifaux. So pretty exciting. Really opens up the scope for. Things that you can use. I hope I've got that correct. But yes. Very cool. Also, hello, Betsy. Thanks hey, for Betsy. Joining. How's it going? Hi, Sean. <laughs> A great Sean? shot of my palette, but not the many. I'll paint lower. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's my bad. I I am mixing a bunch of colors today because I didn't want to look for all of the. Uh, I don't want to have to rummage on camera. <laughs> it was also my fault. I was like researching while Dave was talking and I was not looking at the camera. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry. We'll survive. Everybody will get there. So Gretchen, you are painting Anya. I am painting Anya, yep. Cool. Sadly, I don't have any uh, of Anya's backstory. Um, let's see, so, I just have a little card. Oh, uh, I can look. Is there any story I, on I, The cards have all, all the play yep. rules, but they don't actually have any back. Just in case people haven't seen them, these are what the cards look like. Oh, I can switch to your camera. Oh, that's okay. No worries. If you want. Oh, there you uh, go. Now I'm dropping my mini. So your Finnegan. guy is Winston. Winston Finnegan. 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 And he has a defense of five, willpower of six, move of five, and he is size two. Could you spell fin Finnegan for me? Hmm? F I F I N N I G A N. I G. Finnegan begin again. Finnegan. I don't know where that's from. Sweet. But he has a number of different attack actions. He has sharp wit. Sharp wit is one of his attack actions. <laughs> that's amazing. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic. I do like how pompous your character looks, Dave. Oh yeah, definitely. Because he's like his like bravado. Yep. Well, <laughs> one, one of his um his arms. One of his abilities is celebrity. <laughs> After this model resolves the interact action, it may choose an enemy model within um, mm. six to gain distracted plus one. I I want a cool. special talent. It's just. Celebrity, that sounds fun. Yep. Definitely cool. It sounds like a character I played in um, Mansions of Madness. One of his like character traits is that he's very charismatic. <laughs> like that's okay. it. That's like he, he doesn't have a strength. He just has charisma. <laughs> like, okay. Just all about the charisma. Which for that game isn't actually that that useful because you're fighting monsters. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, oh, I will charm the dark ones away. No, well, I think the idea there is that you, you're trying to get everybody else to do your fighting for you, right? There you go. <laughs> Hello, Sean. 
However, you will eventually run out of people to do the fighting. I just realized I started painting the back of his um, his waistcoat the same color as the front, but I probably should leave it black and try and do it a little bit shiny. So it looks like a silk, back of a silk vest. So Gretchen, what are you, what colors are you using or? Um, so I didn't want to rummage, so I just decided to mix up a brown. Um, and I, had a, I was actually talking to Dave before, before the show. I was watching this girl mix up skin tones and different colors with acrylics. And I was like, oh, hey, that's cool. Um, the other day, I'm going to try to find that video for people. Um, but basically, I am just mixing up a bit of red. Well, this is hot orange, but it's close enough to red to make it count. Um, is that bloody red? No, it's just hot orange. Oh, hot orange? Wow. Yeah. Um, and a little bit of just a dab of green and a lot of blue and purple and a little bit of black. Um, and we'll see how well it works. I like the, the one skin tone I got. I'm trying to get some for her hair right now so I can get some base colors going. Um, but yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was just wondering what color you were trying to go for. Uh, yeah, just a brown so that I can uh, get some kind of dimension to her hair. And then her coat on the card, if I try to go with it, is uh, black with like a gray pattern on it. So we'll see. We'll see how that looks. <laughs> it should be fine. I have confidence. Okay. Okay. Anya expresses many of the same traits as the Condor Rails. Speed and efficiency. The syndicate keyword is all about expansion. And Anya's expansionist ability provides a powerful deterrent, crea creating hazardous auras around her scheme markers. That's cool. Cool. They may not be the deadliest bunch, but the syndicate crew is extremely consistent. Interesting. That's cool. The players that are able to best manage the risk will truly unlock the power of the syndicate. Okay. Nice. Is the pattern in her coat molded or onto the mini or will be attempting to free paint it? It is not molded at all. We're going to attempt to free paint it. We're going to see I think that'll happens. be fun. <laughs> You'll be fine. Absolutely fine. I I'm feeling confident since the Jeff Goldblum. I'm, I... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you're able to do that, then truly, I'm able to do anything. This will be a snap. It'll be all good. I have a picture of Anya that I can show everybody. Oh, cool. That's cool. a better picture. So you can actually see... Oh, she has like an actual like pattern, pattern pattern on the bottom half. I don't... That's not visual, actual like... A full yeah. reference picture of that doesn't look like it's super available. Looks like a big wing. Yeah. Yeah, coming down do on the one that. side. I could just yeah. do like a feather or something. Yeah. yeah, I think a feather would be cool. But I wanted people to be able to see what you were talking about. Yeah. Like that pattern. Almost the like brocade. a brocade. Yeah, brocade. Is that what it's called? That's a, yeah, that's good enough. Yeah. That's what... Cool. That's the word I wanted to use. So. <laughs> Excellent. Has to be right. Great. Okay. Okay. So I've everyone got... who's joining in the chat, let us know what you're painting, what you're working on. Oh, Betsy, did the new um, Horizon Dawn miniatures come in? I know the. Those were coming. Yeah, I knew you were waiting on them. 
And cool. I'll pop over to Dave because you wanted to say something. I was just going to say that I'm also, at the same time, working on one of the surveyors. Oh, so okay. I think, um, so yeah, one of the surveyors here. So these guys are the minions. Um, and they have uh, chains, sort of, well, they're grasping, they're sort of holding onto chains. They're, they're swinging around. But one of the things that I find quite interesting is that, so on their, on the models, the arms have quite a bit of texture and it looks like they have like rock arms, kind of like the Ooh, thing. That's cool. Uh, so, oh, let me get that on camera and not show yeah, you. It almost looks like the thing. Yeah. From it, Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. Yep. Exactly. Or, um, Oh, what's the character from Thor? <gasps> oh, oh yeah, I know who you're name? talking about. Thor's Rocky friend. Thor Ragnarok. Is it like Krang? I think it's Krang. Prong. Something Korg. like that. Korg. Korg. Hmm? Korg? Korg? Yeah. I had some of the right letters. K-O-R-G. Korg. Korg. Let's go with Korg. Like Korgi, but without mm -hmm. the E. So yeah, it's kind of got that sort of feel. It's gray brownish gray sort of um, skin on the arm there. So that should be fun. But it also looks like he's wearing a three-piece suit without the jacket. <laughs> As you do. So it's, I, I guess you could call that a two-piece suit. But most people would think two-piece suit would be like, include the jacket. He's so. doing his best. Yep. So I'm just uh, sort of jumping onto areas that are would be similar, so I'll probably go and do the the flesh on these two now, and then come back and work on the uh, maybe work. I'll probably work on the shirts, so I'll give them some nice white shirts, and then finish off the uh, the pants and waistcoat on Winston. Winston, I think that'll be good. So what have we got in the in the chat? Um, Okay, JT is working on uh, Blight Lords, Blight Lord Terminators, is hoping to get them finished this weekend. That'd be very cool. Looking forward to seeing those. Uh, actually, Rob just says, guess, Dave, guess what, I, what he's up to. Uh, I know that about an hour ago in the group, Roger posted a picture of Cleopatra, Da Vinci, oh. and Imhotep from nice. uh, Monument. Monumental. Monument? Monumental. With the L. With an L. Monumental. Yep. So uh, they were looking very cool, Roger. So I can only assume that you're uh, finishing those off. Six to go, he Six says. To go. Six to go. Wow. So close. So close. I feel like we should give you a special prize, Roger. Like we've been there with you <laughs> along. Like another journey. 24 um, <laughs> warriors or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. If we can get hold of that. That'd be good. <laughs> uh, Betsy says that the, the next wave is coming tomorrow. Tomorrow. Fantastic. So you've got, make sure you've got some uh, time lined up this weekend to get stuck into those. Uh, Sean saying uh, it's working on the Lumineth Purifiers Underworlds crew. So the Warhammer Underworlds Lumineth group. I think there are four models in that, which are all very sweet Lumineth elf models. Be very cool. Uh, oh, and basically says the second box is coming on Saturday. Those should post pics in the group. Uh, James is working on the Bones Five uh, Reaper Bones Five pirate ship. Very cool. Uh, and Jason's been finishing up some tree stumps. Stumps. Interesting. More terrain than minis. From some internet mini store. There we go. Uh, Sumki says hi. Oh, says hello. Hello, Sumki. Hello. Um, and Sean said yes, there are four in that Lumineth group. Excellent. Ayumi is painting up Gauss Mall, who's a dragon from Monster Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> I promise one day. 
<laughs> One day I'll be painting something non monster apocalypse. That's fine. If you, if, you like painting, if you like painting the Mon Puck, paint the Mon Puck. That's cool. They are cool minis. They are Not indeed. Not gonna lie. I think we had a lot of fun working on those. Paint what makes you happy. Definitely cool. We are a judgment free zone. I'll let you uh, read some key's comment there, uh, Leona. <laughs> Painting cut down trees always stumped me. <laughs> Good stuff. Yes, Jason, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Someone, oh, it was when I posted in the group asking for minis. Apparently, Josh Potter yep. is creating a gaming table. Creating a like game? A gaming table. Oh, okay. Cool. So they hadn't painted any minis. Right. And it made me think of those gaming tables that are actually terrain tables, but they have like space where you can play a game. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what yeah, you're talking okay. about. You see them at conventions sometimes. Yeah. Back, back in the before days. I'm kind of confused now. You've never seen like the Basically, fancy... you just have terrain on the, the table, but then there's like a space where you could play a board game. Oh, okay. Not a miniatures game. Right. It's not a miniature game. So the thing uh, that was confusing me, yeah, uh, is, is as a miniatures game player, all, all the tables that are played on have terrain. Oh, okay. That's so, a good point. Yeah. I was like, huh? This sounds strange. That's why. So, cool. I don't know. I have to, uh, have to see if you have some photos of those so you can... Show me. Excellent. Well, that sounds like there's a lot of uh, a lot of cool painting going on. A lot of things happening, which is excellent. Today I painted up some uh, Warhammer Stormcast Eternals for the um, September or the. Painting Happy Little Minis article that's going into the September issue of yeah. Game Trade Magazine. So it focuses on sort of polished metal. So that was fun. Painted up three of those. Starting to get the face. Very tiny. Very tiny. Very, very tiny. We'll see how this goes. So for the flesh, I'm using um, <clears throat> so carne marron, so the tan from Vallejo Game Color, a little bit of rin flesh, so most of my usuals, and I've got a little bit of white on my palette as well. Uh, if I want to switch it up a little bit, I can just mix some of that into the. The group for the the higher highlights. Of course, he does look quite pale. There'd probably be a like a mid mix of that. This that I'll mix a little bit of grey into to um, to get the I call it a five o'clock shadow. So he's got looks like he's got one on his chin and. Uh, the sides of his head are shaved, so better put that in there. I think it's always a fun look on minis when you can get that kind of detail in there. The surveyor, even though uh, the card art has him with a similar sort of shaved side of the head, the mini I've got here is actually fully hairy with a beard as well. So I might just give him some crazy uh, sort of ginger hair. Oh, did they? They might have got mixed up, but 
the show. Yeah, <laughs> let I'm me kind of, check because there should be a card. I kind of I'm looking across the the table at uh, the ones in front of Gretchen, and I'm not sure they have any. The artwork has any um, mm. kind of crazed what hair and beard kind yeah, of thing going on. One. This one, yeah. That must have been what happened. What was that? Oh, okay, radio. There we go. We'll switch. Here we go. <laughs> so Check him out. Okay. Cool. Alrighty. Ready who? Yeah, that was almost almost dropped my my mini. Almost dropped it. Yep, straight into my paintbrush. That's not good. There we go. Okay. So I thought I might. Uh, I know I've been. I was away last week. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but I was going to mention that the Nova Open Charitable Foundation, which is an organization I talk about every year, uh, have opened up their uh, summer raffle ticket sales. Uh, basically, they went on went on sale. Tickets went on sale today. I think uh, we've got until like September to buy tickets, but of course, buy early, buy often. Uh, there are about 45, 46 uh, raffles, ranging from armies, units, single models. Um, I think I, I posted a, I'll uh, put a post in the Facebook group, Penny Happy Lemonies Facebook group today, with some pics of the of my contribution, which is the big knight tyrant that I probably showed on some of the hobby hangouts. <laughs> earlier this year. I can't remember if I actually did. I'm sure I probably did. But anyway. Uh, so that's there. Uh, I think the last year they raised about $150,000, $160,000 to go to um, Doctors Without Borders, uh, Breast Cancer Research Foundation, and the Fisher House Foundation. And nice. This year, they are uh, hoping to do something similar. So definitely head over and check it out. NovaOpenFoundation.org is the I website. The the okay, cool, awesome. Leona is. The link is in the chat. Always excellent. So, yeah, definitely head over and check them out. Um, one, uh, well, a couple of other standout pieces. Uh, there is uh, Duncan Rhodes, who um, used to be one of the um, Warhammer TV paint painting presenters. Uh, started on his own business at the beginning of last year called the Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy. Uh, Duncan has donated a um, Adeptus Custodes army to the whole thing. Um, I didn't, I should have gone and checked to find out how many models are in it, but very beautiful looking army. Who, whose was it? Hmm? Duncan Rhodes. Duncan Rhodes, yeah. So, Duncan Rhodes is a bit of a legend amongst um, Games Workshop gamers. Primarily because he always talks about, in each of his videos, he talked about putting uh, two thin coats on the miniatures, and it was in like every video. That's funny. So, um, there are it, like memes like going around or jokes that go around like how does Duncan warm uh, Duncan roads keep warm during winter two thin coats <laughs> there are people who have uh, like their Instagram handle is like one thick coat <laughs> so all sorts of good stuff but uh, yeah Duncan has donated an army which is awesome uh, pardon? It's 13 models. Th okay, cool. 13 Which, models. That's a lot for an Adeptus Custodes army. Those guys are super elite in the game. And, 
Dan Osborne. That is a mate of mine from the West Coast, from Portland. Uh, Dan's sent a couple of, uh, basically submitted a couple of pieces, including he's done another, uh, he's done a night as well. Um, the Baroness Aurelia. It looks fantastic. Absolutely awesome with a big shield and sword. Um, loads of other other folks have uh, donated, which is really cool. Anna Polanschuk, who was uh, one of the artists from the The Art Of series, from the first three books, uh, has donated a piece. So that's very cool as well. Yep, I encourage everybody to go and check that out. Help them raise some uh, money for excellent causes. It will be great. I did. I did grab a picture of your night. Oh, okay. If you, mm -hmm. did, you want to talk about it or no? Uh, well, can, should we should we throw it into the? Oh yeah, that's all what minis? we can do. Yep. Yeah, let's do that. I'll do that. We'll come back to it. <laughs> okay. Very cool. So how was painting last week while well, I was uh, not here? Painting last week was super fun. We had Joe Brassi on again, the sci-fi blah, 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 blah. I can speak words. The sci-fi author slash swordsman, Joe Brassi. Yay! <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he came and he hung out with us on um, Hobby Hangouts. Right. And painted a little bit. I um, got to talk a little bit about his books and um, it wasn't his first mini this time. Remember? Because last it his time. <laughs> yes, I think, actually. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> One okay. of us. It's fine. Um, and then, uh, yeah, he ran off to go be on another podcast. Okay. Um, which was. Oh, what was it? Leonard, do you remember what it was called? Oh, man. It was like, it was Authors and... Authors and Monsters? Authors, authors and, and Authors? Monsters? It was a bunch of D&D &D nerds and authors. And now we're going to have to look it up. Okay. Because <laughs> um, now I said it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah but... Cool. It was a D&D &D podcast that has authors on it. Oh, no, Gary nope. says at least his third, he painted the Cardinal Albert too. Oh, yeah, you're oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was painting a knight or, no, an archer because he had. It was an archer. He had arrows. And then we talked about longbows. <laughs> yeah, we did talk about longbows. Cool. But, yeah, that was cool. Just to check back in, see how Joe was doing. Nice. That's good. Oh, already got that. Just lining myself up for success. And then Gretchen day. painted up that dino. Yeah, and then I painted up my little dinosaur. Friendship is uh, chaos theory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was Friendship the name. Uh, finds, finds a way. way. Yeah. <laughs> That was that was fun. Um, never gonna ask the chat what I should paint ever again. <laughs> no. Was that was that a chat suggestion? That was a chat it was. suggestion. It was, um, and we went with it. Wait, was that a Josh Potter suggestion? I do not remember. It I sounds like remember. a Josh Potter suggestion. Anyway, a shot discussion on longbows. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> um. But yeah. Nice. Excellent. That's cool. Well, last Thursday, I was relaxing in a tiny house in Maine. Sounds lovely. Yep. How about that? That sounds amazing. It was pretty cool. So a, a real sort of genuine, a genuine real live tiny house. I say real live because it had a composting toilet. 
So something was alive. <laughs> something was alive, yes. In the toilet. It was kind of frightening. Um, my wife uh, <clears throat> has said that she very, very much does not want to encounter another composting toilet in her life. And I guess that's kind of so fair. So no I think that's tiny fair. houses for you in the future. Yeah, no tiny houses for or us. Or just like tiny houses that aren't off the grid. Yeah. Like you could just get one, but it has a flushable toilet. It's more like an <laughs> RV. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. My uh, So my brother and sister-in-law, uh, my wife's sister and brother-in-law. So however, that should be best said. Uh, they were in Maine at the same time. Uh, wow. my, my wife and her sister have had a little bit of a rivalry kind of race to, to be the first to see a moose. So we were up there to, uh, to go on a moose tour and hopefully see moose. We did see moose, we saw two. Um, and I think they agreed it was like a tie. So there was no big argument, which was cool. Uh, but they got um, lobsters one night. They were staying in a different Airbnb. It wasn't a tiny house, it was like a full size house. So we went to visit them and uh, my wife and daughters were extremely excited to use their bathroom because they could go whoosh. I didn't have to turn a handle, like crank a handle five times so after pooping. So it was an experience. I thought it's it was like, fun. I thought it was pretty cool. And it'll, it'll be great because now, especially your daughters, they'll always have that story. They always remember <laughs> when they're, the... when they went to the tiny house <laughs> yep. and they had to turn the handle. <laughs> exactly. I think it's going to be great. That's cool. But uh, when I asked my eldest daughter, Emily, who is a fan of tiny houses uh, and the main reason that we kind of went there, went to that tiny house, uh, I said, what was the worst thing about it? And she went, <laughs> I said, composting toilet? Yeah. Okay, then. I got surprise vacationed by my fiance oh, cool. because it was my birthday weekend. Nice. Yay. Happy birthday. Yeah. Excellent. And where did you go to? Uh, he brought me to Virginia Beach. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was really nice. The weather was perfect. The beach wasn't crowded, so we could stay in our little pod away from everyone. I say pod, me and him on a beach towel, just like hissing at people like geese who get too close, you know. That's that's how that's yeah. the best way to do pods. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it's much better than like tide pods or anything. But keep going. <laughs> cool. Mm. That's nice. Yeah, the weather was a, a, I mean, being in Maine. It was a little bit too. Um, too cold for to spend too much time at the beach. When I say too cold. I mean the water was too cold. To no, we had a great time. We actually got um, we went to the beach and we went swimming. And while we were swimming, uh, dolphins showed up. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. So that was really cool. That is neat. Got to see wild dolphins, and then we went parasailing, and we got to see um, stingrays in the water. Wait, you went parasailing? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> That's a pretty good... Like, I look into the camera like, yes, parasailing. Parasailing. <laughs> I always think of parasailing as, like, the fancy thing that you do in, like, the Caribbean. It's like... Um, I think the fanciest thing I've done is I went snorkeling at a shipwreck. Okay. Um, I don't think it was meant to be fancy, but <laughs> um, <laughs> it was like a World War II wreck. <laughs> and <laughs> saw a dolphin pod from your beach pod. Yeah, we did. It was fun. <laughs> um, so there were as a lovely couple next to us, and um, 
one of the ladies thought that they were sharks immediately. Oh no! Um, <laughs> that, she learned how to tell the difference. There you go. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> I guarantee Excellent. they were not sharks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Not when they like careen out of the water like that together. Yeah, and the fins are so other different. people. Yeah. yeah. But it was it was fun. It's all good. As you said, now they know. When yep. you see mon many, they're not usually sharks. <laughs> Just looking at the uh, some of the comments. Um, Jesus said it, that their first house had an outhouse in the backyard. We called it our quarter bath. <laughs> the house I was, like, that I first grew up in, um, I first grew up, I never really grew up. You can probably tell. But uh, the house I first lived in for the first seven years, that had an outhouse as well. We had a, basically they had an outhouse while my dad had been building the house. And they built an indoor toilet as well, so... I'd never really used the outhouse, but it was there in the corner of the yard. A little bit stinky. But, uh, yeah. Lucavio says, wow, that was unexpected. <laughs> Joined late and hearing Dave talk about composting toilets. 10 second rule certainly applies here. 10 second rule. Like if you drop something in the composting toilet, you've got 10 seconds to retrieve it. No. Uh, that sounds like a terrible rule. <laughs> Leave it. Walk away. <laughs> Um, some, key, some key said my parents built a camp in Maine my mum refused to go until it had a toilet that's awesome yep that's funny The uh, yeah when we were there on the moose tour the um, our tour guide was basically saying that like everybody in Maine has a camp they have their house and, and they have a camp as well um, which is anything from a, another house on the waterfront or on a lake to um, a place where you can sort of pitch a tent. But everyone has one. That's cool. Somewhere. So, yeah, definitely pretty good. I got the feeling, though, that not a lot of them have toilets. Hmm. So, some gear if yours has a toilet, that is cool. And look up here says, you know, they weren't sharks because there was no theme music playing in the background. <laughs> this is true. Absolutely uh, true. Uh, yeah. 10 seconds of conversation. That's what the 10 second rule is. Okay. So you have to listen to 10 seconds of the conversation to see where it's headed, I guess. But here we go. I have a feeling I'm going to be going back and forth on these two models, kind of randomly. Painting base coats, doing some highlights here and there, working on the other one. Not sure why. Just the way I'm feeling like working on it this, this evening. We were supposed to go on a whale watching tour when we were up there. That. Yeah. That was really fun. Unfortunately, ours was cancelled. No. Yeah. And we found out after our hour and a half drive to the location. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh. But uh, fortunately, we were able to um, switch it up and take a puffin tour. Oh no, that would be fun. That was pretty cool. Definitely. My fiance absolutely loves puffins. Yeah? Yep. Fun fact. How does he feel about porgs? Um, I think he likes them by like adjacent puffin-ness. Right. I don't think he has super strong feelings about them, but he definitely loves puffins. So I, I heard that the reason that, um, that there are the porgs in the movie mm -hmm. is that when they were filming on the Faroe Islands, which is a big sort of puffin haven that they couldn't get the puffins out of the, well, the only way to get the puffins out of the shot 
Was just turn them into porgs? Turn them into porgs. <laughs> well, and puffins are kind of like cats, and like they like to mirror what you're doing. So apparently, like they just really wanted to be involved. Yeah. Yep, a lot of, um, there's, like, pictures with, uh, different, um, scientists out studying puffins, and they have little fake puffins to try to convince the puffins to come hang out so they can study them, and the, uh, the little fake puffins have, like, a little pole that they're sitting on. They don't actually have feet. So okay. puffins will lift one leg up to try to mimic that. <laughs> oh, okay. That's funny. Mm. That's cool. But yeah, on the uh, on the boat that we were on, uh, we went past a uh, or to a particular island, and there were scientists on the on the island uh, study, studying the puffins and the other seabirds. In the uh, on the who were nesting on the island, and our guide or the narrator, I guess, uh, she contacted them by a radio and had a conversation that we everybody on the boat got to hear, and that was pretty cool. Get a little bit of information direct from the, That's cool. the horse's mouth, so yeah. to speak. Yep. All about how the puffins were doing and how the turns were doing. That kind of thing. Almost got a job in California once on a uh, whale watching. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, because um, I knew how to spot like whale tracks in the water. Okay. Which is something that sounds really silly, but like dolphins and whales, whenever they swim like this, the they um, change the flow of the surface of the water so it'll actually like you know the surface is kind of like wavy and choppy you'll just see a big like uh they call it like a footprint where it's just um the texture of the surface of the water changes to like all flat right because um, it's pushed been pushed yeah. out right um okay. and it's usually the same size as whatever animal uh is like kind of like their fluke their um their yep. tail um so uh, I w we were out on like a, a little boat. I was with my uncle and they were, I was like, oh, hey, uh, I know how to track whales and dolphins like poorly. <laughs> and they're like, great, you should come work here in the summers. Spoilers, I did not because um, I had things to do in my life. Right. Um, but yeah. That would have been a fun uh it Fun is, gig? Yeah. That's definitely cool. <laughs> Some key says, at camp, the world is your toilet, unless you have a bathroom. <laughs> nice. Uh, and then said, it was cancelled because the captain wasn't doing well. Mm -hmm. Not so good. No. But the... Uh, Actually, it was cancelled because Captain Kirk needed the whales to save the future. Yes, wrong coast. But I did, um, I did make a comment about that. I said we needed to go and watch. Which one was it? Was it Star Trek Four, Five? I can't remember. Just so we could see a whale. But no, the reason it was cancelled was that uh, the seas were too rough. So of course we went out on a puffin tour in the seas. We didn't go anywhere near as far out as we needed to, but um, it was still rough enough to cause my uh, eldest daughter a little bit of discomfort. But the uh, the folks on the on the tour had obviously uh, dealt with a lot of a lot of people throwing up. Basically, <laughs> so they were they were ready. They had the little sick bags everywhere and. We're ready to collect them. So, good work, them. We made sure we gave them a good tip. <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty cool. Okay, there we go. 
go, he's coming along. I'm kind of at a, an odd point with him, I think, where it, on the artwork on the front, I think he has, where is he? There he is. No, no, that's cool. It looks like he has black, black trousers. But uh, if you can find a f like a full pick, yeah, that would be cool. But at the same time, I really want to sort of mess around with that uh, that burgundy. So I'm kind of tempted to not worry about the black trousers. Looks like technically, looks like techni technically they are black. black trousers. Yeah. But give me a second. Artistic license. Artistic that, license. That is the name of if I had a uh, autobiography, it'd just be artistic, It'd be artistic license. license. Yeah, there he is. Cool. Yeah, he's like a fun guy to have at a party. Yeah. Oh wow. I'm gonna paint those spats on his. He's like, hi guys. Jeez. That's his. That's his voice. Voice. <laughs> and you also have to paint the smoke from his cigarette, by the way. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Not gonna happen. What? Sorry. Had I known I was painting this guy, I would have asked Gretchen to bring in some of the wispy... Like uh, wispy snows. Yeah. Cotton. Winston is a showstopper and utterly charming man. Brought out when his employers need someone to handle the more delicate social side of things. <laughs> That's so funny. Excellent. Okay, so I'm gonna get on my palette. I've got some uh, the basalt gray mixed with some of the tan. And it looks like that's probably a little bit too, a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna add in a little bit of white. There we go. We'll see how this coat comes across. So about that. Not horribly so far. Going okay. But I'm gonna put a layer of black, uh, like a thinned out black over it to kind of make it look more like burnt out velvet. Right. The white feather right now looks more like a fringe, but it's it's working. It's fashion. Cool. I'm kind of I'm kind of about it. I might add one on the other side just to make it just to make it fashion. Excellent. Uh, so as you see there, I've thinned this down. Mixed it with some uh, some of the tan, the basalt gray, and a little bit of white. So now I've got that thinned down. I can start to work that through as a as a glaze for the the five o'clock shadow. It, uh, as I'm painting it on, it's going a little bit thin. So I'm going to mix a little bit a little bit more gray into it there. So that looks alright. Because you just don't just want to paint uh, sort of grey stubble around there. You've got to have a little little bit of that base skin colour in there to make it uh, because you'd be able to see the skin is just being the colour of it is being affected by the the very short hair. So. There we go. You start to see that on the, yep. So I'll paint a little bit more around here. Speaking of feathers, one um, super cool thing that we saw when we were at uh, Acadia National Park. We went to one of the stops and we went to, um, it was at the, the Wild Guardian, the Wild Gardens of Acadia was the name of the area. And we went on a, like a boardwalk, walk through a kind of marshy area. And as we were walking out on the boardwalk, somebody like stopped and said, oh, have a look over there. 
there's an owl in that tree. Oh, that's and cool. And we looked over and there was this owl. It's probably like this sort of size. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's cool. And then we walked on a little bit further and there was another one like off to the left of the, the path. And it like flew down, it hopped around, it sort of tore at a stump to get something to eat from out of the stump and that kind of thing. And spread its wings and moved around a little bit. I was like, wow, that's a great show. That's very cool that we've got to see those too. And we walked to the end of the boardwalk, then we turned around and we were walking back. And then there were some, some people stopped ahead of us and we looked at what they were checking out. And there were a couple of branches that went over the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. And there were t two owls sitting on the branches, like directly over the top of the boardwalk. That's really cool. So we're able to get like really close to them. And while we were looking at them going, wow, this is really cool. Like the mum mm -hmm. flew up and sat on a branch next to them and uh, had a mouse in its mouth. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It was just like the weekend for wildlife is what oh, I'm awesome. getting. Like yep. you got to see owls, I got to see dolphins. Like yep. we are. We got to see puffins. Moose. Puffins, yeah. But yeah, it was uh, it was super cool. It was um, it was great. And like yeah, the, so one of them leaned in, grabbed the mouse off the mum, and the mum turned around and flew off. And like this was in the, it was probably like eleven o'clock in the morning. That's really awesome. Yeah. And when we spoke to uh, some of the rangers later about it, they were like, really? You got to see owls out in the day? <laughs> we're like, yep. Here are the photos. There's some key. <laughs> <laughs> Says, what wildlife did you see? Yeah. Um, this weekend? What happened this weekend? Oh. Probably the wild thing I saw was a squirrel. Nice. You know? <laughs> Good old gray squirrel. Good work. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a fun wildlife weekend. Boo. That's okay. Maybe next weekend. Yeah, mine was like um, earlier this month. Or no, last month. Oh, when you I went, went camping? camping. Yeah. yeah. And I don't remember. Oh, I saw a beaver dam. Okay. We didn't cool. see the beaver. Like the beaver was, it's in the middle of a lake or whatever, or a swamp. Right. So like you didn't see the beaver, but I did see the dam and that was super cool. Excellent. I think I was more excited than any of my other family. <laughs> right. I was like, this is cool. <laughs> And my brother's like, it doesn't show up on my photo. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's great. Oh, do you guys want to look at some minis? Yes. Sure, yeah. Let's definitely check that out. So this week. Oh, hey, sorry, just before you, you go on to it, <laughs> I'll say something. He said, Did you leave it to Beaver or go to the damn gift shop? Uh, ha, 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 ha. Nice Good one. Stuff. Uh, this week, I had asked people if they painted Malifaux minis. So we have like a combination of things that people have worked on and then also some Malifaux minis okay. that people have painted but just like not recently so right it's kind of a assortment of those just so you know cool that's good sorry i'm just gonna i will look up in a second but i'm just painting the mustache <laughs> i of course should not have started this at that moment This is the Goonies game, and I'm pretty sure this is Ravensburger, but I could be wrong. It looks like it. No, fantastic. Excellent. Look at Chunk there. <laughs> Ready to do the truffle shuffle. Oh, it's actually Funko. Funko Games. Cool. Fun from Funko? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, they look fantastic. Excellent work, huh? 
really got them. Awesome. Sean Aston. Super young Sean Aston. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Ayumi. Here we go. Lava painter painted up. Uh, finally finished General Hondo. Yeah, this is pretty uh, pretty wild. And it was fun last week when... Oh, not last week. Week before. When I was working on the... Uh, the super large uh, sergeant. And it was like, I wonder, we, wonder, we were wondering whether everything had been upscaled or should oh, yeah. be provided with larger, larger items. This one's fairly clear that General Hondo is, has just picked up that missile truck <laughs> and is going to use it like an RPG. But yeah, great work, Ayumi. Looks very cool. There we go. Oh, Chris Hood. First three of a five man kill team for uh, the uh, Death Watch. Real quick, Ayumi wanted to talk about non metallic metal. Ayumi said, please roast me on the non metallic metal. I'll, I will take all the feedback. Okay. Well, we won't roast <laughs> you. We don't no roast roasting. People. No. Um, I think. Uh, so to me, it looks like the places you've used the gone for the non-metallic metal are like on the metals. There's like the little metal bar at the top, mm -hmm. and on the metals themselves, um, possibly on the the fist there as well, it's like the brass knuckles kind of thing, and then the plates, possibly the plates then on the uh, that left fist. Uh, so a very important thing with non-metallic metal is contrast. So going from, from dark to light um, across the, the piece. I think the way that it's reading in the, um, in the photos, the most successful place there is on the, um, those metal bars. So you can see that they're, they're curved, they've got a bit of curve to them, um, but you've got it going, there's like a little glint of white and they go out to um, almost black at the edges. So it's working very well as a as a metal look there. On the um, brass knuckles, though, you haven't taken it. You don't have that little white glint oh, of metal. True. So important thing with non-metallic metal as well is to have a, go and have a look at the what the metal would look like in a photo. So you get a photo of some brass knuckles or photo of a sword or whatever it happens to be that you're working on um, and you'll be able to see how quickly it transitions between the color, uh, the shades so um, some metals like brass will have a, a broader or bronze I really will have it like a broader um, or a more smooth gradation something like um, like polished silver though mm -hmm. will have a lot of very light colors and then it'll be a very quick shift into the black sort of through the the darker shades of, of silver or gray if you're using because you'll be using that so my suggestion there is some of those edges um, along the, the brass knuckles and also a point or two on the um, the little raised nubs there pick those out with some white um, will help um, help to sell that is uh, as non as as metal, but uh, yeah, definitely um, for a for a first run at it on a such a huge mini, it's a uh, very good work. Nice work, Ayumi. Thank you. <laughs> if you have any questions, just uh, uh, pose them in the group. That'd be cool. So yes, back to Chris Hood's Death Watch uh, kill team. These are looking very cool. Um, We've got a space wolf, a salamander, and I am not sure about the third guy. But uh, yeah, coming along nicely, Chris. They're looking good. Chris is really enjoying screaming faces, obviously. From those, <laughs> I think. Oh, Christopher Johns, 3D printed and painted these little guys for a future D and D game. Oh, those are fun. Yeah. These they're. Got a bit more of a fantasy, more like more like I really like more like a sci-fi blend mm -hmm. with uh, 
sort of what I'd expect to see from dinosaurs. Those ridges, the eye ridges there, and the sort of the ridges on the shoulders, mm -hmm. that kind of thing look really interesting. But I do love that, uh, like the striped patterning on the tails as well. Yeah, looking very nice. And then you got great contrast going there as well between the the basing and the and the uh, dinosaurs. Looking very cool. Nice work, Christopher. Clayton. So this is um, uh, a mini from Malifaux. Yep. Or weird. From, from weird, yeah. I think... Pretty sure it's Malifaux. It is Malifaux. I think that was yeah. a good guess. It is pretty uh, pretty cool. I, I, I think this is from the Ten Thunders um, faction. But uh, yeah, looking very cool. I, I don't know the name of the character, but... Uh, Great color choices there as well, Clayton. I love the um, that sort of pale blue teal kind of look, which is balancing really nicely across against the the orangey golds that you've got going on with the uh, the parasol and the the guards on the swords. But yeah, very nice. Almost General Grievous kind of <laughs> level. Had, she had three swords and a parasol. Parasols can, I mean, you can do a lot with parasol. You can, definitely, definitely. You can confound and befuddle people. You can. And you can poke them in the eye. Definitely good. Cornish Mikey. Is this, this is another Malifaux model, isn't it? Yep. 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 Cool. Okay. I don't know. I can't remember. I think this one might be called the Dreamer. It could be a, like an up, a recent, like third edition update of, uh, Classic Neverborn model. It looks awesome. That little kid with his, uh, it looks like he's got a, like a wooden sword held out. Looks like a kid who has taken control of his nightmares. I think you're He right. is no longer scared. Absolutely correct there. Yep. That looks really nice. Great work. I love, uh, I love the work on the, um, I guess the, the rift, the, the portal there. This is pushing through. Great highlighting work there. Nice one, Cornish Mikey. Great. Dan has been painting up a Blackhawk Blood Bowl team. Oh, also, Sean had the name of the one mini. Oh, I had the name of it? Hinamatsu? Her, this is Hinamatsu. Hinamatsu. And then this guy is Dreamer and Lord, Lord Chompy Bits. Bits. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, it's very cool. Nice. I, do, I do like this interpretation. Thanks, well. Sean. Yes, thanks for that, Sean. Very cool. Oh, Lucafio says, what if the kid is the monster's nightmare? Oh. Yeah, Lucafio monsters has Inc. children. <laughs> nice one. Uh, Blackhawk uh, Blood Bowl team from Dan looks uh, very cool. I love the, uh, the goblins at the front with their sort of mismatched armor. I think that, that nice deep green works well against that um, sort of really saturated orangey uh, yellow for the armor plates. Looks great. Nice work. And I think the um, using the, the static grass on the basing there gives it that real um, sort of football field yeah. kind of look. Nice work. Excellent, Dan. Okay. Oh, Chris Gawker is working on Morven Val. This is one of the newest uh, Sisters of Battle miniatures from Games Workshop. Looking very cool there. And that huge sort of mech suit. Really liking all of the, the gold trim and the gold detail that you've put on here, Chris. Looking really solid. So much detail to pick out. And those look like uh, little gargoyles over the top of the missile launchers. Really like that highlighting on those fabric folds. Yeah, yeah, definitely really cool. I feel like drapery is hard to do anything with. Yeah, it can be tough for sure. 
But it looks like Chris has put a little bit of uh, texture in there along the edges of those, those folds. Yeah, looks really nice, Chris. Great work. <laughs> Look up here says, yes, Dave, my youngin is nearly Gretchen's age. <laughs> Excellent. Mm. And Roger says, uh, so about Chris Walker's piece just before, says the purple looks awesome on that one. It does. Josh Parker has painted a three, uh, 3D printed Settlers of Catan tiles. Very cool. What would you get from this tile? What would I get from that tile? Like, do, you, do, you, do you have a specific tile that you get like get wood from or sheep from? Oh, or that's true. Whatever. Um, Chris, there's a mine, there's a lake, and a forest. I think this is ore. I think it's ore. Or iron, depending on who you play with. Yeah. Right. I think you're probably right there. It is confusing, though, because there are woods on yep. it, and, like, wood is also... Yeah. Oh, I forget what the brown tile is. I wonder if, uh, if the wood tile in, in this sort of set would be, would, like, a hill right. with, a, with some trees and then a whole bunch of tree stumps, perhaps. Oh. Yeah, see, I think I want to say or because I see the pick, the axes, like, the pickaxe. Yeah. And, like, that indicates that's what you're going to get yeah. from that tile. Yeah. Nice one. I thought it was cool, though. Yeah, definitely cool. It looks great. <gasps> oh, fun fact. I say fun fact. Some people might not find it fun. But um, talking about uh, in Maine, one of the places that we went on the moose tour was uh, Spencer Pond. But it was, it was huge. It looked like a lake. Okay. And we said, well, surely this is, <laughs> is a lake, pond? not a pond. <laughs> and apparently the designation between lakes and ponds has nothing to do with their surface area. Oh, but their depth? But more, the, and not just their depth, but the, um, the rate of change of the temperature, the water temperature. Oh. So ponds can be massive, but they, they're a little bit shallower and... They're, they're so they're, it'll start off warm water on top, not as warm, not as warm, not as warm, not as warm, cool, cold. Yeah. Whereas lakes will be warm, cold, cool, cold. That's gotcha. really cool. So, yeah, interesting thing. That is fascinating. We I learned not have known a that. fun fact. Learn something every time. Sometimes it's even about painting miniatures. <laughs> but thanks for that uh, for posting this Josh that looks very cool nice work on it uh, JT said he was painting up some Blight Lord Terminators these are the, the ones that he's been working on these are looking very cool one of the things that I love about these models is that they so the models that are kind of to the left of, of the photo have got um, so at the moment they've got those white sort of protrusions those are like um, branches or roots growing out of them. Mm -hmm. So you've got that sort of strange, um, almost composting toilet kind of feel to them. There's strange things growing in them. But uh, yeah, JT's doing a nice job on these. All that brass trim is definitely uh, a lot of work. But yeah, nice work, JT. They're looking great. Oh, from Malik, painted up Teddy. This is also a Malifaux Mini. Ooh. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I think this is in the same war band as the Dreamer and Lord Chompy bits. Sean can let us know. Oh. Fingers crossed. Uh, kind of a Babes in Toyland feel going on. It has on that there. kind of feel to it. Yeah, a lot of um, Island of Misfit toys. Kind that of thing. want to murder you. I, hmm? I said that want to murder you. It does, yeah. 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 For sure. The, the murder teddy. But uh, no, this is looking really nice. I think the um, the choice of like the purple uh, for the fabric and those the smiley face on the repair patch up there looks great. Uh, the purple's a great um, sort of counterpoint to the, the gold stitching there. But yeah, nice work. 
Looks awesome. Good work, Robert. Oh, Sebastian, Lord Cooper's pet dino. Ooh. That drool, which I assume is done with a hot glue gun. It might be done with a hot glue gun. It might be do, done with um, Uhu glue. Uhu? Uhu, Yuhu? You? <laughs> Not like the chocolate milk, but, um, or the chocolate milk equivalent. Um, but uh, no, there's a, uh, a glue that I don't think you can get it in here in the US, but you can get it in Europe. Uh, oh, it's UHU. UHU, yeah. yeah. So you can get, you can get like UHU uh, glue sticks here in the US, but uh, they have a, a glue that, um, so you squeeze it out and you can get like a, a toothpick and just tease it quite a lot and then lift it up and sort of stretch it, like dab it in one part and then stretch it across to another part of the mini. You can do it clear like this. You can mix in some, um, That's really like cool. some red gloss paint, um, and do like blood strands and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, Sebastian's done a really nice job on on this one. And I love the look of the rest of it. I love the, the uh, white sort of spines and spikes. They look great against that orange. That orange has got a lot of excellent depth to it. I love the purple around the mouth. And that eye, look at that eye, so cool. <laughs> but I think this is, a, is this another Malifaux miniature? I think so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. There's some, there's some wild and wacky stuff in that range. Some more of it here. Very yeah. cool. Oh, yeah, some of Sean's stuff. Very cool. Maybe Sean can let us know what, uh, what these are. But I think, um, I'm really enjoying the uh, kind of the red, um, looks like it's, uh, like a fire kind of thing on the, uh, second one from the left. Like a it's fiery kind of, kind of smoke almost. Like yeah. whenever you get those real, like, intense fires. Yep. Where the flames look more dense. Right. Yep. They're yep. billowing up with the smoke. Definitely, uh, definitely looking that way. But no, these are looking very cool, Sean. At some point, I need to ask you, you have a, have a thing for painting the edges of your uh, bases white. I need to ask you why. You let us know. But uh, no, looking very cool. Nice one. Oh, sorry, uh, if you can go, just go back for a second, Leona. Sean has said it is Kitty, uh, Alyssa. So uh, Alyssa is that creature. Um, a blood hunter and Tuco. Very cool. And what um, what faction are these from, Sean? What keyword do they have? I don't recognize them. But yeah, there's so much. It's been a while since, oh, well, quite a while since I played Malifaux, but definitely some great looking stuff. Nice one. Oh, Stacy's been working on some Oryx, Oryx, and more Oryx. So these are uh, the orcs for uh, Warhammer Age of Sigma. Coming along, getting a nice, uh, nice good start with some uh, some airbrushing to get those base colors down. That red on the armor for the uh, I think they're called Gore Grunters. Not exactly sure. I those have an huge airbrush uh, kit that I need to definitely play with. Yeah. At some point in time. You should definitely do it when you can. Uh, get the the exact color you want, the exact base color down that you want to start with and really save a whole bunch of time on an army. It's definitely, uh, definitely worth it. But uh, I think the thing I love the most in this, uh, in this picture is on the banner. So you've got that sort of bluish gray banner there. Yep. You've got the red skull. Just underneath that, there's a set of checks. So blue and white checks. Going across mm -hmm. a little band of like two wide. Looking very cool. Nice work, Stacy. Excellent. Oh, cool. Who's this? Who's this by? Some jackass. No, that's uh, it's by me. <laughs> this is a uh, Soul Piercer. 
is a night tyrant from House Divine. Um, but yeah, this is my contribution to the Nova Open Charitable Foundation Summer Raffles for this year. Um, they've got a whole bunch more photos on the uh, on the website, but yep, this is the the piece that I built. That's about uh, twelve and a half inches tall, I think. Uh, it comes in its own special carrying case from KR Multi Case. Um, so basically I plucked out the foam, cut it out all out so I could slide it in carefully, mm. push some, put, put some of the, that plucked out foam back on top to make sure it didn't move around, closed up the case and then gave it a little bit of a shake. I didn't hear any sound, gave it a bigger shake. I didn't hear any sound. So then I was like, ah, and there was no, no movement at all. Nothing broke, nothing rattled around. So wherever this goes in the world, we know it can be safe in that uh, in that travel case. Definitely cool. And then one more. Cool. Oh, Stephen Nevleff, painted the nightmare version of the rail golem. This is Malifaux. Yep. I mean, <laughs> weird. Weird. Yep. So yeah, looking very cool here. Uh, I am so the I think the original rail golem had um, was kind of constructed out of parts of right had like rails and railway ties and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, I could be wrong on that but uh, but yeah this one's looking very cool um, it's got a great uh, that sort of barrel body kind of feel to it Looks excellent. I think Steve's done a, a nice job here. I love that little bit of uh, fire, f like fire freehand on the uh, the bracer, I guess, over there. And yeah, looking very cool. Nice. So thank you everybody for um, posting your miniatures in the group and yeah. posting all of those Malifaux minis as well. So we get to, got a chance to see some more after, oh, as we're painting a bunch of them tonight. I say a bunch of them and in the end it'll be probably two that get finished. But, uh, which will be Winston and Anya. Yeah. Over there. I don't think I'll get to finish the Surveyor. Even though he's looking pretty cool. I will just focus on this guy. Oh, Gretchen. Could you talk a little bit about what you've painted so far? Yeah, so I have her pattern on her coat going on. And pretty much I made her buttons gold because I felt like everything was blending in a little too much. And I think that with her feathers, it creates a nice little kind of triangle of visual interest there. Uh, now I'm attempting to paint feathers on her <laughs> quite what I would prefer it to be. But that's okay. You mean you rather it went off in a different direction or yeah, maybe a little rather... bit easier to get to? Or... Yeah. Okay. Also, I don't know what the actual pattern is on her uh, coat because it's from the the pictures from like the side. So we're just we're just playing. We're cool. Making I a think fringe. that's absolutely fine. I mean, that is one of the things as well. Like on so the folks that are uh, weird to have artwork that they create, like concept artwork, which is generally colored. On the back, they present all of the miniatures in sort of the raw render form. So there's no, you don't get to see a painted miniature. And I think part of their idea behind that is that you're quite welcome to go and paint them however you like. But uh, I think for, particularly for these guys, the uh, 
there's not a lot of not a broad range of colors that you're going to sort of choose for waistcoats and trousers with creases in them. I don't know. I think I think you could get pretty creative. Yeah, I, I think you can do some fun stuff with them, definitely, but not likely to do. Stripes. Oh, that's what I'm working on right now. But I, I mean, you're not likely to do like light blue or orange or yellow kind of thing. Well, now someone's just going to have to get the mini and prove you wrong. Sure. Make it fashion. Make it. Make it so. But yeah. these uh, these syndicate models do give me a lot of feeling of the uh, the guild models, which are some of the first ones that I painted for Malifaux nine or ten years ago. Because we've got that uh, sort says, of Victorian kind of feel. Anya looks Native American. Anya has a few things <clears throat> in her descriptor card that um, kind of have a Native American um, vibe about them, or at least someone kind of mimicking that. Um, her says her attack is ancestral tomahawk. Um, and yeah, so she, she has feathers in her hair and, um, on her bracers and, um, coming off the tomahawks. So I don't know. It doesn't have any, like there were no little blurbs. Well, there was a little blurb. Leona had a little blurb. Um, but it didn't really talk much about her uh, ancestry. Oh, Lacavio says, Dave, did you hear any chainsaws or find a hockey mask while you're on your trip? Maybe stumbled upon a lone sneaker with a stain upon it. No, I didn't. However, there was a, there was an, an incident. There was kind of like a, there was a connection to another horror, um, Another piece of horror that sort of connected to Maine. It kind of felt like a, a little bit of a Stephen King novel moment. Oh. Uh -huh. Where uh, we're in the town where our uh, tiny house was, the town of Stonington, uh, which is on Deer Isle, um, which is sort of just south southwest of Acadia. Um, the uh, first morning we were th well, the first night we were there, we were trying to get to sleep, and there was like a, a foghorn sound that we could hear off in the distance, um, which you kind of you kind of okay with. And it's like okay, well, it's very coastal. And there's fog around. Let them go to town with the fog, uh, like the foghorn. But the next morning, um, when we got up and we were walking around town, there was a sound that. It was kind of, you know, sometimes like off in the distance, there's a train, mm -hmm. sort of a long train powering through and you, you hear that sound and sometimes you hear like a little squeal of metal yeah. or metal kind of thing. Um, so imagine that combined with like a, a jet engine cycling up. That's weird. Combined with, uh, there were a couple of like a, um, like the drone of an air conditioner. Mm -hmm. So com combine all of these sounds. And that was going on sort of constantly during the morning. So okay. it started around like 6.30 in the morning and went until about three or four in the afternoon. And we just weren't sure what it was. And um, as we were walking around, we were walking back and I was like, okay, I think we've worked out where it's coming from, which is up beyond this wooded area. There was also like a no, pre no trespassing area. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't go and investigate. And I was like, I think this could be, it might be one of those things where when we ask a local, they'll say, what sound? <laughs> Whatever do you mean, Dave? Right. Right. There's no sound. 
Um, so when uh, the guy who owned our tiny house, the tiny house we were staying in, um, he had kayaks and he brought it, the kayaks along for us to go kayaking in, which is really super cool of him. Um, I said, oh, I wanted to ask you about a sound that we heard this morning. And he was like, what sound? <laughs> and I said, it sounded like this. It sounded like a mix of a train and a jet engine and an air conditioner and that kind of thing. Maybe there was a, like a big saw kind of thing. Mm. I think it's like sawmill kind of thing as well going on. And he goes, there's a foghorn out on like Mark Island. Is, was it that? And he was like, and I said, Is it, can anyone hear that now? And he goes, oh yeah, yeah, I can hear that now. I said, no, it was definitely not that. It was, it was that, that, that doesn't sound, sounds like a foghorn on a distant island. And he was like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so I think that's uh, kind of set, set me up. So when I eventually feel like doing any sort of creative writing again, I'll write a, a horror story about <laughs> the town of Stonington being taken over by something. But uh, yeah. Otherwise, we felt perfectly safe. Kind of. One thing that I was really impressed by is that even though all the, all the roads were very windy and very hilly and... Did everyone know turning, how to drive? Um, that I didn't see a single person cross over the center line. <laughs> Everybody stayed in their lane. So I knew as long as I stay in the, my lane, no matter what speed I'm doing, I should be just fine. Here in uh, Maryland, it's not quite the, that would not be quite the case. <laughs> That's true. Yep. Well, you know, people try their best here in Maryland. <laughs> Sometimes. I'm going to have to stop you there. But, yeah. I just painted eyebrows on this guy. You'll be so proud of me. So proud of me, Gretchen. That's where all the character is. Yep. It's like 90% of the expression, right? Yep. Also, people just look really weird without eyebrows. Have you ever seen like the pictures of like alien, people yeah. with their eyebrows photoshopped? They look like off? an alien. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah. wow. I never knew how much eyebrows just had to do with the face. Yep. Yeah. Very, very important. Okay. How much time have we got? We've got 19 minutes. Plenty of time. Yeah, we're ahead of the curve today. That's excellent. I am excited about that. Oh, okay. Sean was saying the Explorers Society is her faction. So that would be uh, Kitty and Alyssa, and Bloodhunter, and Tuco. I hope. That's cool. I think I will have to, uh, I'm gonna have to get back into checking out some Malifaux. Because the minis are really nice to paint. I've done a great job with them. I think the way that, uh, that Winston here has his wine glass angled. You can see it's kind of tilted over. Kind of sloshed a little bit. I think he's kind of like, hey, can I get a top up? <laughs> so. I've just painted the glass with some um, pale gray and then mixing in a little bit of white to um, Give it a little bit of a reflective kind of look. And then I'm gonna take some of this, I'm gonna take, just take some of the burgundy here, maybe a little bit of burnt red. 
So the burgundy that I'm using is the Barak Na burgundy. This is the one that Jeff recommend Jeff Hall recommended to me for painting my Barak Na dwarves, Caradron overlords. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that, mix in some of the burnt red to get a, a nice red wine color. Yeah. That would be cool. Okay, there we go. Let me paint a little bit inside the glass. Also, something that I had um, when we had the we were invited over to my sister-in-law's place in Maine. Uh, we had lobster. They cooked lobster for us. Of course. Us. So, um, and they were s like soft-shelled lobster. Okay. So rather than having to use like nutcrackers to crack the claw and crack the, the tail and all that kind of thing and go to a lot of work to get everything out, it was basically like pop. Oh, that's fun. And then on the tail, it was like, chick, 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 chick. peel it open and pull out the, the tail. It was nice. Yum. Yep. We took part in some seafood as well. We were, I feel like when you're at the beach, you gotta, you gotta partake in the seafood. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Did you say you went with gold for her buttons? I did. Okay. I might do the same thing then. There for a bit of gold. Oh no. Maybe not. There it is. Gold. If the gold will come out. You can cut away from my camera just in case it explodes. <laughs> it exploded. I knew it would. I knew it. I knew it. It's one of those things that's like, just squeeze a little harder. Just squeeze a little. Oh. So. And now I can go into picking out the buttons. Looking good. We've gone quiet all of a sudden. I know it's because we're we're hustling. It's the hustle, the last minute hustle. Yeah, the last minute hustle. The oh my goodness, now I'm trying to fix things and I'm I'm breaking things in yeah. the process. <laughs> Okay, so I mentioned that it was going to explode. There's the large <laughs> pile of, of gold. So much gold, look how big it is. It's a lot of money. Yeah. I love gold. You're a rich man. <laughs> I guess this guy isn't getting silver chains, he's getting gold chains. <laughs> All the bling. Paint his, his little tie. I think on the card it's like a dark, sort of bluish gray, but I'm gonna give him a little bit more of a pop with some. He seems like a guy who would have a little bit more of a pop. Yeah. Same with his, uh, the holster for his Derringer. Look at that. Yeah, looking pretty good. All right. Let's see how close he looks. Oh, sorry. 
Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Okay, let's see if we can squeeze out this guy. I don't think I'll be able to, but I might be able to get his face done. Let's aim for that. I'll just paint. Try to clean up her hair and face. Anybody want to guess as to what uh, dark brown I'm using here? Is it charred by chance? It is <laughs> indeed charred. Charred brown. Was it going to be anything else? Absolutely not. No. If you thought it was, you don't know me. This guy's got a pretty cool uh, little, a little bit of reddening around the nose. So I might put a little bit of that in once I finish the, his brown hair here. And just focus on getting that, that face finished. Okay. Well, where are the oh, other JT one? JT has to go. Oh, oh catch you later, JT. Have a good one. Um, where the other uh, surveyor had like white shirt and grey arms this guy's got a grey shirt and more of a um, sort of the dirt coloured arms there so I'm going to have to work out exactly how I'm going to do do this guy I'm going to give them all a different look if I eventually paint them have to see. But yep. You got that there, and then to give that little reddish tinge to the nose. To look like he's uh, <laughs> been hitting the uh, the whiskey bottle a little bit too hard. And just mixing some of the the burnt red in with the uh, the tan. Paint that around. Kind of on the end of his nose there. I can come back and mix a little bit of white in with the. Oh, Roger has to go too. oh, bye, Roger. Off to play a game. At this time? I know. That's like 2 a.m. for Roger. I wish I had his stamina. <laughs> there we go. Can't quite see it on the screen, but it's looking all right. I'll give his lower lip a little bit of a, a tint as well. Because these models are so fine and detailed, just doing those little little extra touches can give you a really great, great kind of look. Okay. Paint some shadows in there. I won't go and paint any eyeballs in on these models. Too yeah. small. Too small. Yeah. Hmm? I think that's smart. Smart idea. Yeah. Too small. Yeah. Even the eyebrows were they were tricksy. Oh yeah. Definitely. Now some highlights for the beard. Excellent. Okay. What are we at? 852. <laughs> One thing that we probably should talk about, and when I say talk about, I mean, we haven't planned anything for it yet, but we probably need to start working out what we're going to do. We're going to do a giveaway for reaching 2,000 people in the Facebook group? I think we should. <laughs> Was that yeah, a yes? no, are you going to stop us? Yes. <laughs> so, we'll have a chat amongst ourselves and work out what we're going to do. <laughs> and uh, so keep an eye out for that in the coming weeks. Yeah, I said something about it last week, like, we should do something. And then I 
hadn't thought about like I thought about it earlier this week. Right. Um. But yeah, Johnny is out of the office at mo- at the moment, so I wanted to like double check with him. Oh, okay. That's sure basically thing. like the reason why I haven't announced anything. Right. Specifically. No worries. We will We're gonna work go rogue. Out. We're just gonna be like, so what, Johnny? What are you gonna do? But it was kind of exciting that we did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. So for those who haven't heard, we have passed 2,000 people in the Penny Happy Little Minis Facebook group, which is very cool. Very exciting. But yeah, I'm with you, Gretchen. Let's do it as a ask forgiveness rather than permission. <laughs> Johnny's we'll never going to leave us unsupervised again. I'm sure he will. He doesn't want to have to babysit us. It'll be fine. Okay. So it's starting to lighten up that shirt on him. Looking pretty cool. Ooh. Right. I don't know if I like giving her leather patent boots, but... We're Let's just going to go with it. How they look? Kind of look like riding boots. Okay. Which is why cool. I went for it. Oh, you just reminded me. I forgot to paint the uh, the spats on. <laughs> yes. Um, Leona, could you put up the picture of uh, Winston Finnegan yes. again? Please. Thank you. I have my paintbrush poised. There, he is. there we go. And I'm just going to get the shape right. There's not a lot of definition for them. So. I think that is going to work. Cool, thank you. Woohoo. I'll actually have her done. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Well, nothing like a little speed painting. <laughs> well, it's such a big change from the uh, most apocalypse minis. Yeah, yeah I don't dislike go. her. Especially for trying to get all that fabric. <laughs> Yeah. I really can't believe that I've got so much gold out for such a tiny, tiny area. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. I need to keep a paper clip handy with my paints. To do a little, sometimes you need to poke a little hole in them at the top. Okay. There we go. Do you have the the webcam working? Uh, yes. Yep. Cool. Tidy that up a little bit. Are you tidying up the base? Yeah, there's just like a little blob of gray on it. And I okay. was like, well, I'll just make all the texture be the same because, you know. Yeah. All right, let's see. Knock down. Okay. Oh. Oh, wait, just take that, move that back. Or should I put the. I know. Did I get it in my shot? Almost. Almost, yeah, cool. So there we go. There he is. We just need to uh, adjust that contrast. Yeah. yeah. That's my skin. <laughs> I shouldn't go out in the sun, should I? I'll explode. 
Yeah, we had the 100 SPF out for the beach. Right, yep. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So there we go. A little bit of an adjustment. Okay. Yeah, it's because, here we go. Okay. Cool. It's because I had the wrong webcam. Oh, okay. Right here. Sorry. All right. Luca Fio says, time to do the West Coast thing and cook dinner. Happy birthday to me. Welcome back to you. Yeah. And happy new home, Leona. Woot. Excellent. See you next week, Lucafio. Have a good one. What are we painting next week? Yeah. Um, I a surprise. <laughs> a surprise? <laughs> no. Sorry, it'll be a surprise again. All right. No, I was thinking. So we actually have another box of weird. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking we can paint that faction. Okay. Sounds good to me. Cool. Have we been able to adjust the? The contrast on this webcam? Uh, I'm trying. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I try to make sure that my arm and the finger lined up. Oh, there we go. Bloop. It doesn't want to do it. Oh, I'm no. sorry. That's it fine. Do it? We'll get okay. pictures and we'll post them we'll up. We'll post pictures. Um, we'll let me grab them and we'll technology. Here, just them. put them on the on my close cam? camera. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Wait one second. They look very cool. I think. Do, um, do. Yeah, I like the way that you've uh, sort of basically treated that that pattern on the the brocade pattern on the. There we go. There we go. So you can see there, there's some great. Uh, sort of pattern texture that uh, Gretchen's put in there. Oh, that jacket looks awesome. And yeah, I think those, um, the white wings, the feathers there, look very cool. Yeah, do, do a little fringe, a little, it's in the cowboy style. It's yep. fine. Definitely good. And there's my guy who's kind of very uh, Victorian, almost Peaky Blinders. Oh, kind yeah. Of thing going on with the hair. But, uh, yep. I'd I like how you gave him a thicker mustache. Yeah, that wasn't deliberate. <laughs> he seems like a guy who would try up different styles. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And find which one works the best and then oh, keep yes. that forever. <laughs> it's good. And yes, the, the pinstripes on there are quite subtle. Hopefully they'll show up in the photographs, but there we go. Nice one. Woohoo! Go team! Yay. Speed painting! Super tiny minis! Yes! From the Anya Core Box from Malifaux 3rd Edition. Available now. Yep. At your friendly local game store! <laughs> exactly. It's been a while since we've like, said that. Yeah, but you know what? I felt, I felt good about that one. That was a good... That was a good... I felt just fine. Yeah. That was spot on. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps up everything tonight. We will see you guys next Thursday where we paint something else weird. Something else weird, indeed. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us, everybody. Bye. I'm Dave. I'm Gretchen. And we'll see you at your friendly local game store.